On this episode of Andor, the Empire tightens its grip, Cassian is hunted, and Mon Mothma and Luthien disagree on the way forward. Hello, entertainment enthusiasts. This is Ray, and this is the Fandom Realm. It's time for another episode, and just as a reminder, this is a spoiler review, so just be warned. So today, what I want to start with is looking at the Imperial storyline here, and we're going to see that the Empire is going to start tightening its grip after the Aldani incident. We're going to get to um, see that the ISB is meeting. They are being briefed by Colonel Yularen. Uh, we know this colonel from the Star Wars canon, and he is giving them a briefing. Basically, he's going over some of the things that are going to change around the universe or around the Empire. And a couple of those things, they're going to start changing sentencing, making sentencing harder on criminals. That's going to come into play a little bit later in the episode. Also, any cultural activities that are used by rebels to carry out any type of an attack, that's all going to be used against the locals. They won't be allowed to do those activities anymore. You're also going to see a bigger military presence. Just this entire episode, we saw more military. We saw more stormtroopers. We saw a Star Destroyer going to Aldani. Uh, we saw that through the eyes of Senta, who was still on Aldani, so we're not sure if she's going to make it off there alive. But with that, it's really showing the Empire being the Empire, being that bad uh, antagonist that we always look for in a Star Wars show. And so along with that, we also get to see in this episode, talking about the Empire, a little more about the ISB. We do know that Major Partagas is going to be supportive of Mira. She's going to be able to gain some power uh, within the ISB because she's going to win a argument with Blevin, and that's basically going to end up putting a target on her back. She gets control of uh, one of his systems, the system that is where Ferrix is. And so with the Empire, uh, we get to see they're sort of up to their old ways. And we're actually getting to see that in this episode. Now, one other thing before we get to Cassian, uh, we're going to get to see more Luthen and Mon Mothma. A lot more Mon Mothma than Luthen, but we do get to see early on a situation where Mon Mothma and Luthen are not really on the same page of the playbook when it comes to how the rebellion needs to proceed. Uh, Mon Mothma is not very happy about the heist in the Aldani system, and she, she lets Luthen know about this. But he basically responds in a way that suggests that she's just going to have to get over it because she knows that that is what has to be done. And so we get to see her leave. She's not very happy. This is basically showing us, I think, that you know Mon Mothma is not still in control at this point of the Rebel Alliance. Uh, if there really is a rebel alliance at the time. Now, we're also going to get to see a little bit of scheming by Mon Mothma as well, a little bit of plotting. She's going to be talking to a banker from Chandrilla, that's her home planet, and she's going to be wanting him to help her set up some type of charity organization where she'll be able to help cover her rebel activities with that charitable organization. This is going to be sort of a surprise to him because um, he's not really viewing Mon Mothma as a strong character. Uh, now, he doesn't exactly know that she's leading the Rebel Alliance, but she's in a situation where she has sort of set up what she wants people to think about her. When we see this conversation with uh, this Chandrillan banker, we're getting this. This is actually what people think of her, that she's weak, that she's not any type of threat, but we know different. We also learn very importantly that apparently her husband and daughter do not know about the uh, Rebel Alliance and what she's doing. And now one little quick last thing before we get to Cassian, and that is good old Cyril is back. He's still with mom. He is in the situation. He's trying to find a job and he finally does because of his uncle. We still haven't really been told who his uncle is, but he's basically being sent to this office. I'm still not exactly sure what the job encompassed, but the size of the office, the size of the building was really supposed to, I think, represent how big the bureaucracy of the empire is and just how expansive everything imperial was. Other than that, he really didn't play a big part. 
Uh, I still don't know why they didn't just go ahead and let Cassian kill him. That would have made much more sense. Now, as for Cassian, this is getting a little interesting here because a couple things are going to happen. First off, Cassian is going to go home to Ferex, and he's going to meet with Marva. During the conversation, really, Cassian is wanting to leave Ferex. He's wanting to get out of town. The Empire has increased their presence there, and because of that, he wants to get Marva out. Only problem is, Marva has been emboldened by the attack on Aldani, and her rebel tendencies have been increased. And so now she's wanting to basically fight the Empire. She's wanting to be a rebel. And the interesting thing is, of course, he can't tell her that, hey, he was one of the rebels that attacked and stole the money from the Aldani base. Now, along with that, uh, we're also going to see a very interesting uh, storyline develop in that uh, they want Cassian dead. And I'm not talking about the Empire. We are given a scene where we see Vel, that was the rebel leader, meeting with, I think it is one of Luthen's assistants, the one at the shop, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody out there can help me with that. But Vel is meeting with her, and the assistant basically tells her, we've got to kill Cassian. He's a loose end. And so that's going to be a wrench thrown into the story, I think. I wasn't expecting this. Now, I'm going to go back and talk about this before I end this episode. But we're going to continue on the Cassian story here. And he is actually going to end up leaving. Marva stays at Ferrix. He's going to go to a planet, I think they pronounce it, Nyamos. And it's sort of a, it, it looks like a vacation planet. There's beaches, and of course there's the Empire. While he's here, he is going to be arrested by the Empire. He was falsely accused. And so at the end of the episode, we're getting to hear his sentence. The judge tells him that, yes, this normally would have been a six-month sentence, but because of the Emperor's decree, because of the attack on Aldani, it's now six years. And so basically, we leave off this, the episode with Cassian getting ready to be thrown in jail for six years. I'm going to tell you, I like this episode a lot more than I've liked most of the episodes so far of Andor. The problem is, they can't just seem to get everything right in each episode. There are a couple storyline issues here for me, and the first one is this whole idea of killing Cassian. I don't think it makes any sense. Yes, I know the theories of if you hire an assassin to do a job, then you get rid of the assassin and you'll have fewer people who know what's going on. That doesn't make a a lot of sense to me when you're talking about running a rebellion and you're going out and hiring basically mercenaries and people to help run your rebellion and then after they help you you just kill them i don't really see where this makes sense in the story also i don't understand the whole arresting cassian at the end of the episode I'm assuming they're setting up some type of jailbreak episode, which doesn't make sense. He shouldn't have been arrested in the first place. Even crazy dictators don't normally arrest people who didn't actually do anything. I mean, he didn't even say anything negative towards the Empire, and they still let him be arrested for some reason. And so uh, with that, I don't understand that. I, I wish I did, but I don't see that. Now, I'm also looking at this episode and I'm thinking, you know, this seems a lot more like Star Wars. And it really was. And I've, I've asked myself, why do I not think this series is as good as some other people think it is? And I'm looking at a couple things. And I'm going to share that with you right now. Well, one thing is, and I've gone back and viewed a couple of the older episodes of Andor. I'm not sure what they're doing with the color grading, but it's very dark. And I don't mean dark as in setting a tone. It's just very gray. And I don't think my mind reacts to that in a positive manner. And so if you compare this episode to all the previous six, it just seems like the color grade is a little bit different. We actually do get to see much more color, but some very bad things went on. And the second thing is we get to see the Empire doing mean Imperial things. We get to see why they are the antagonist. We get to see why it's okay for Cassie and Andor kill two people, one in cold blood, and it's okay because the Empire 
is evil. They have to be beat. And with that, it's okay. The ends justify the means. We haven't seen that in the first six episodes of Andor. I think they were trying to do that early on when they showed us Cassian's home planet. They very much implied that it was maybe overmined and it ended up killing all the adults and all that was due to the Empire. But unless I missed something, they never really established that for sure. And then they just sort of left off of that. And there has been none of this idea of the Empire is this big evil entity. Most Star Wars, you get to know in the first few minutes, this is what's going on. Think about Star Wars and New Hope. First few minutes, we know Empire bad, Darth Vader, Rebels, good, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker. We get all this. It doesn't take us six episodes to figure out uh, Rebels good, Empire bad, and really show us why the Empire is bad. And I think we've been missing that in the first six episodes. So with all that said, I'm going to rate this episode actually as a B plus. I enjoyed this episode actually quite a bit. Still got some problems with it. Hopefully it continues to go up. I want to see more Mon Mothma and Luthen. Uh, we're eventually going to, I think, expand and see more rebel leaders. And I can't wait for that. Also, I can't wait to see how Cassian ends up getting out of this and whether or not they actually do try to kill him. With that said, I'm going to bring the episode to an end now, and please, please subscribe to the channel. Like or dislike uh, the video. It's up to you. And share some comments below. Give me some ideas. Answer some of the questions I have, but be active with the video. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Fandom Realm.